What's happening, creatures? Tim Kreitz here. Time for another Tim Kreitz adventure. Today, Cliff and I are heading out to visit a mysterious radar. Seems they've had a flash flood out here. I think we'll be all right. We're about to find out. Yeah, this whole road washed out. Oh my gosh. Dangers of uh, West Texas weather. Man, that is crazy. That's not a lake, that's a cotton field. Man. So, this radome is part of the joint surveillance system between the Air Force and the FAA. What it's being used for right now is to keep an eye on the common air corridors for anything suspicious. It originally was part of a wider radar system, actually a radar system that may still exist, that is tasked with watching for intercontinental ballistic nuclear missile strikes and air enemy aircraft invasions, that sort of thing. And it's just out here in the middle of nowhere Cliff has an interesting story about this radar. I'm gonna have him tell it once we get up there. <laughs> How close do you think we should get? Just park right here. Okay, Cliff, go ahead and tell us the story about how you got locked in this very radar station one time. Well, back in the 80s, I was in Civil Air Patrol and uh, we were hosting a statewide search and rescue exercise. And me and this other guy were given the job of going out in this area and finding some place to uh, put some targets for the pilots to find. And we stumbled across this installation. It wasn't on any of our maps. So we uh, thought about it and we decided we should probably let these guys know that we're fixing to send about 50 little airplanes flying 500 feet over their heads. So we drove up to the gate and there's a call box there at the gate and there's a little sign on it that says push for service. So my buddy pushes the button and the gate opens. So he drives through <laughs> and the gate closes and uh, there's no way to open the gate on the inside. <laughs> and, uh, all the doors were locked. We knocked, nobody answered. We looked, jiggled the handles, all the doors were locked, we couldn't get in, we couldn't leave. <laughs> so we kind of stood around for half an hour scratching our heads trying to figure out what we were going to do. And I realized uh, at the time this road here wasn't paved, and I realized the dirt was kind of blown out from underneath the gate. So I, uh, it was about eight inches maybe off the ground and I was pretty skinny, so I laid down on my belly and I crawled underneath the gate in my uniform and hit the button and the gate opened and he drove the car through and I jumped in and we left. And, uh, <laughs> I fully expected the cops to show up at my house for the next month or so, but never did. So you have the unique uh, distinction, if you will, of having invaded a government air defense facility, <laughs> wandered around and left and never got caught. Yeah, I guess so. Good job. <laughs>
All right, well, here's what I'm thinking. Andrews is that way. Buddy's steak fingers, perhaps? How does that sound? I was thinking the same thing. Right on. Let's do it. Man, that's all the damage I can I can do. I can't finish all that, nor should I. But you cleaned yours up pretty good. Yep. All right, guys, buddies, drive in the greatest steak fingers in West Texas. Ask for them by name. They are not paying me for this endorsement, by the way. I just love this place. And with that, we'll put a plug in the jug, man put an end to this episode of Tim Kreitz Adventures. Thank you guys so much for joining me. We'll see you next time. Bye.